Right. Let's get started. So, uh, welcome to the GDC Technology Theater. I'd like to introduce uh, Sam Clegg, who's with Made with Marmalade. He is going to be doing a great presentation. So, anybody in the aisles, please feel free to come on down, take a seat, and take it away, Sam. Thanks very much. Um, so, yeah, I'm from Marmalade, and I'm here to talk about um, our SDK and how you can use it to leverage your existing skills, code, and assets to target mobile platforms such as uh, those based on the Tegra 3, but uh, also all mobile platforms. Um, and here at GDC, we've got a promotion going on where you can grab a T-shirt and uh, one of these cards. And uh, if you come to our second presentation, which is um, over with RIM, then we'll give you a free one-year license to the SDK. So T-shirts are down here. You can come up afterwards um, and grab one. Um, So today is just me. My name's Sam. Nick couldn't make it, so I'll be doing this uh, 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 presenting what Marmalade using the slide deck. And then I was going to have a live demo, but that's not going to work today. So I'll try and talk you through some of the things I was going to show. And then I've got a demonstration of our technology running on the Tegra device here, the Sony um, tablet. So Marmalade is a cross-platform SDK that allows you to target multiple platforms with a single build um, and a single source code base. And we support uh, many platforms. Over the years, we've supported more than 12 different operating systems, and we add operating systems all the time to our list of supported platforms. So this, this enables you to uh, target new platforms as they come out, uh, access new markets, and make more money from your mobile content. Currently, we support Android, iOS, Symbian, Playbook, uh, uh, LG TV, uh, and we're adding new platforms all the time. In the past, we've supported Brew and Windows Mobile. Um, and th there's, there's more platforms coming each year. So the, as the key to Marmalade is the ability to d deploy your, your application or your game um, with a single click to multiple platforms. And you can, it's, uh, Marmalade is based on standard C and C++, so you can leverage all your C++ knowledge and bring across all your existing middleware and code bases, pretty much. Um, you can reuse your code because we support standard C libraries, we support STL and um, all the standard C libraries you expect, and we support standard OpenGLES 1 and OpenGLES 2. And then once you've put all your C++ code for your app into Marmalade, uh, we provide a one-click solution that allows you to create packages for all of the different mobile operating systems um, from, your, from one build. So you don't build for each operating system, you build once and deploy to everything. So um, this technology is not new. It's been around for a long time. It's been heavily battle tested. I've been working on this for about five years myself. And it's been used by some of the biggest publishers in the world to, produ to produce cross-platform mobile content. This is um, just four examples of uh, big games that are produced with Marmalade. We've got uh, Call of Duty from Activision, Lara Croft from Eidos, Need for Speed from EA, and Backbreaker Football from Natural Motion. Also, um, we had a big, um, exciting uh, success story this week, which is if any of you guys have iPhones or Android phones, you can get them out right now and go to the App Store. You'll notice that the top grossing and the top paid app on both Android and iPhone today is called um, Draw Something. Uh, and that was made with Marmalade. So if you go right now to your App Store and you top grossing, top free, it's a Marmalade application, uh, which was done by a single guy. And it's been a whirlwind success um, just this week. It's called Draw Something. You basically, um, it's like Pictionary. You draw something with your friend and he guesses it wherever he is in the world. He sees you draw in real time and then you guess. Um, and it's, people seem to love it. It's very social. So um, why do we need Marmalade? Why is it useful? Um, anyone here mobile developers already? Uh, have we got any mobile developers at all? A few. So uh, it's a complex world. Um, uh, and we early on, we've been in the industry for over 10 years, and we identified some of the core problems which basically come down to fragmentation. Fragmented tools, fragmented devices, and fra and which results in you having fragmented code. 
And Mar Marmalade tries to address that. We, we've spent the last five years addressing this problem, and we've come up with a solution that involves unifying the tools, unified devices, and unified code for you. So how do we do that? Well, we provide an SDK that allows you to not install any other SDKs. You don't need to install the Android SDK or the iPhone SDK or any of the SDKs for the platforms that you're targeting. You just need one SDK and one set of tools to target all those platforms. We, we can produce packages for all those platforms without the tools of those platforms. You can use your favorite tools. You can use Visual Studio or Xcode, whatever you're used to using to develop your C++ code. And you can do that on your favorite platform. So if you're targeting iPhone, you don't need to use a Mac. You can just use the Windows Marmalade and produce iPhone games, no Mac involved. Uh, and the, the same goes for the Mac. You can produce the, the Marmalade SDK for Mac and Windows are equivalent, and they can produce applications that run on all the mobile platforms. So unified code. With Marmalade, you have a single code base. You don't have like an Android build and an iPhone build. You've just got one code base that compiles once, and the same binary then runs on all the different platforms. We have a common language for all platforms, which is C and C++. Uh, but you can also add in Lua or Python or Ruby or whatever um, language you want to build on top, because you just build the VM right in, because they're, they're all written in C++ anyway, those runtimes. So you can add. We quite often add on Lua, for example, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. And you can, when you change your code, you can instantly then deploy new builds for all platforms from one tool. And uh, as I said, we have a binary format that is uh, the same binary that runs on all platforms, and we try and keep binary compatibility so that even if you've got an existing game build that you built with last year's version of Marmalade, the new version of Marmalade comes out with some updates for certain new devices, and you don't even need to rebuild your game. The same bi game binary then just runs on a new platform. Uh, one example of that is when we add new platform support, um, we usually don't rebuild our content library. We, I can take um, three-year-old content, um, such as that uh, Need for Speed game that I just showed you, and I can run it on platforms that did not exist when that game was created, and I can run the binary. I don't need the source code. I don't need to rebuild. So you can, so you can target new platforms um, that you didn't think would exist with an existing binary. Finally, um, we try and unify your view of the device. So if you've ever had to write um, portable code that runs on lots of different devices, you'll know about all the different ways in which they vary, all the idiosyncrasies and quirks of particular devices, chipsets, GPUs, CPUs. Um, the Marmalade runtime uh, has hundreds of uh, fixes for, diff for these variations so that they present a unified view to the developer. And every week, we are releasing new SDKs with new fixes for devices that come onto the market um, afresh. Uh, and we've provided a desktop simulator so that you can do almost all your work without a device at all. You can actually run your ARM code on the desktop. Use it. We have an ARM simulator that simulates the ARM CPU um, based on QMU on your desktop. And it's very fast. Um, it starts up instantly. And it allows you to basically debug your ARM code on the desktop um, and simulate all the different form factors, all the different um, input devices that you might have on the real devices in the real world. And that's what I was going to show, planning on showing you in my uh, live demo, but I'm not going to be able to do that today, I'm afraid. So uh, how does it work, this cross-platform technology? Well, normally you target the, the device, the operating system, and the drivers, and the OpenGLES. But with Marmalade, we have um, a small abstraction layer on top of that, which takes away the idios idiosyncrasies and presents a unified API and uh, standard C API that's common to all, all platforms. And then on top of that, you can use the standard C++ libraries, and then all kinds of uh, middleware. So we've partnered with lots of different middleware companies to provide um, middleware libraries that run on Marmalade. So you can take um, ODE Dynamics Engine, Bullet Physics, or Box2D for physics. Um, and all of these middleware providers take advantage of the fact that um, there's one code base. So, the, so 
once they've ported it to Marmalade, it's guaranteed to work on, uh, across the entire ecosystem of devices. They don't need to report it for Playbook or report it for LG TV. It's, once it's on Marmalade, it's on there forever, and it never needs to be modified. So, and of course, I mentioned earlier, you can embed entire language runtimes on Marmalade. So we've done Lua and Python, but you can also throw Ruby on there, like V8, um, any kind of runtime that's written in C or C++ with it against POSIX and OpenGL um, should, should compile unmodified because we support the standard POSIX uh, systems. Uh, a bunch of other libraries that we provide um, are SQLite, which is open source, and FreeType, also open source. And we've done integrations with ScaleForm, um, which is a, uh, a flash runtime. And then lots of other middleware you can find on our GitHub page. We've also done integrations with some higher level 3D tools like Shiva 3D and Cocos 2DX, which is the uh, 2D, 2D game engine that's very popular on iPhone. So you can use all of this in your application. So as well as that, we also provide our own studio tools, which is like 3D middleware for basic model manipulation and uh, resource loading and management. Uh, that's completely optional. Um, a lot of people choose to just go straight down to the low-level C++ and OpenGL layer and bring across their existing engine. If you don't have an existing engine, you can use our, our tools as a starting point. So everything above, everything in the yellow line and above is then compiled to the single binary that then runs, that is then packaged with this system abstraction layer into the final binary that runs on the device. So you take your common game build and say the Android, lo Android uh, implementation of our layer and that produces the APK file. Um, it's all automatic with our, with our deployment tool. So there's your application sitting on top. Um, so a lot of people, their first question is, well, what if I want to access something in the operating system that you guys don't expose with your abstraction layer? And so a couple of years ago, we developed this system whereby developers could build their own extensions to access new features of the device. Um, that, so for example, say uh, a new input device uh, uh, such as the gyro, if we hadn't supported that, then you could, t you could build an extension that would access the gyro directly. So this is more for people who want to use the very latest features and don't want to wait for us to implement them. They can do it themselves. Uh, this slide is quite long. I'm not going to go in, into the details too much of the extension building. Um, you, don't, you guys don't need to know that much detail right now. But suffice to say that you can build extensions that talk to the native OS if you need to. So we've partnered, as I said, with lots of middleware providers. Um, we've got lots of social, social physics uh, network. Um, Anyone who has a, an engine in C++ um, should be able to port in literally hours or days to Marmalade. And we're, uh, we have a GitHub page where you can find a lot of um, middleware that we've already c packaged up in an easy to use format. You can, just get, you can even get uh, pre-built libraries so you don't need to build it yourselves. So I'll just end with a couple of uh, different types of games that have been ported using Marmalade. Um, Konami bought this uh, Pro, Evolution, Pro Evolution Soccer to iOS and Android, and they um, developed from scratch on Marmalade, and they, I think they've done three iterations now of this game across multiple platforms. You also have a smaller indie developer called Hotgen who developed this game Tofu and Tofu 2, which is quite popular sort of 2D casual game. It was very successful on iPhone, but it's available on Android and Playbook as well. And as I said, we're always adding new platforms to, um, to our support list of supported platforms. Uh, right now, we're looking at, for example, Google Native Client, Windows Phone, um, what else? More smart TVs. There's uh, many platforms we can't talk about as well. 
The, the next big iteration of Marmalade is also going to support um, HTML5 integration. So you can write most of your app as an HTML5 app and then go to native when you need it for, say, 3D rendering. We also support also plan, uh, improving our support for native UI, displaying like the widgets of the native operating system. And also adding support for deploying straight to desktop, so you can put your app in the, uh, in the Mac App Store for desktop. So I can take some questions, and I was also going to I was going to show a live demo. So maybe I'll just talk you through what I was going to show in the live demo, which is basically the asset conditioning for Tegra. So we're here on the Nvidia stand, Nvidia stand because we support we have built-in support for Tegra and um, DXT texture compression, which the Tegra supports. Um, so the Marmalade project description is all based on um, simple text files, where and you, you can choose what what uh, different texture compression you want to support in different builds. Uh, the idea is that you have your code builds to a single binary, but you can still have multiple asset sets. So if you wanted to, you could build your game once and then have um, Tegra and PVR and whatever different kind of compressed assets you want all built in, which is like a fat binary version of your game. Or you could produce a single binary that just has support for one texture compression format. You can do the same thing with high-res and low-res versions of your assets. The idea is that you might have like 10 different versions of your assets for different targets, but only one code base and one binary. Um, so that was basically going to be, be my demo. And then I was going to show you the, the example game that running on the Tegra device here. Oh, yeah, it's got power. So I've got, I'm going to show you two games running on this Sony tablet, which is Tegra 2. The first is Backbreaker um, THD, which is Tegra HD, which is available in the, in the Tegra store. And it's like um, American football tackling based game. And it's been optimized for Tegra. So are there, actually, I can take some questions while this starts up, if anyone has any questions about how it works. Or if anyone wants a T-shirt, you can come up and grab a T-shirt. We've got um, these cards that y if you bring to the next presentation, you'll get a free SDK license. Um, yeah, go ahead. I've got different sizes in the T-shirt box there as well.